I'm legally insane. And right here are 10 PS3 games, all recent pickups, all bangers, hidden gems, even some trash. Damn! I go dumpster diving from time to time. Nothing wrong with that. And sometimes, you know what? Sometimes you find a game or two. You gotta do what you gotta do to find the games for cheap. I've been telling you guys for years. Always get your games for cheap before the prices go up. I did an entire series, Xbox 360 series. I'm working on a Wii series right now. I'm telling you all about it. It's been a long time since I made a PS3 video. Long time. In fact, the last time I think I made a video, this Baby Yoda poster used the force off himself from the wall. That actually happened. Here's an interesting game that's going up in value. NBA Street Home Court. This is part of the NBA Street series. Let's put Baby Yoda back up. Tell me if I'm wrong. All right, screw, screw Baby Yoda. Uh, yeah, so it's part of the NBA Street series, and a lot of the NBA Street games have been going up in value. Ah, oh, crap. And since that time, I took it as a sign not to talk about the PS3 anymore, so I haven't touched it ever since. But I'm back. I'm back. I'm tired of being bullied. I'm tired of being bullied by Baby Yoda. Ain't nothing going to stop me now. I'm still collecting PS3. I never stopped. I never will stop until I have all the games that I need. That's the other thing. People always say on the internet, I am seeing a lot of people out there saying, well, if you have a game collecting addiction, you need to stop collecting the games. Stop spending your money on the games. Well, I don't think that's how it works. Here's how you know when to stop. When you have all of the games that you need, that's when you stop collecting. It's really that simple. And I don't have all of the games that I need yet, but I am close. I'm very close with the 360, the PS3, and the Wii. I'm completely finished with the Wii U. Like, there is a time when eventually you will stop on your own because you already have all the games. It's not like I'm going for a full set. I, I would never recommend anybody go for a full set just because there's too much garbage in a full set that you will never play. And it takes up too much space and you need that space for other games and other consoles. Let's get started. Let's find out what I got, why I got these games and what I paid for each of these games. First up, we got a game that you did not know was rare. This is becoming a cult classic. For those that are familiar with this game back in the day, Yakuza Dead Souls. CIB, of course. Don't guys, don't buy this only because you're going to regret it. I've done it before. I've done it many times. And I regretted it every single time. And I end up having to sell the disc only and then repurchasing the CIB. Yakuza Dead Souls is a spin off from the main line series that got heavily bashed. Some, you know, rightfully so in many cases, unjustly so in others. And as a result, the sales were not all that great compared to the other main line games in the series understandably so but also because of that it's a bit of a rare game now it didn't get 20 million sales it didn't get 10 million copies sold they released it and it and it kind of flopped it's that simple and as a result it never got a greatest hits copy for example it never made it there so the main gist of this game as a spin-off series is that it's you're obviously fighting zombies. Okay, you're fighting zombies. It's meant to be a mix of Resident Evil 4 and Dead Rising. Most often compared to Resident Evil for the survival, survival horror elements. But in terms of just mindlessly killing millions of zombies, I like to compare it to Dead Rising. I'll start off with some of the positives. It is known for having great boss battles and a great soundtrack. And you know what? I'm, I'm going to throw this out there too. They ain't never going to re-release this. I'm telling you right now, it ain't never getting re-released. It's a PS3 exclusive. You're not going to find it on any other platform. And that's, that's contributing to why the price is going up, by the way. When I said it's a rare game, 
Some of you were thinking, well, who the hell is buying that game? That game sucks. I remember that game back in the day. That game sucks. Well, it's becoming a cult classic now. People are realizing it, w it, it, it was unfairly bashed. There's still a fun time to be had here. And here is my proof that the market agrees with me. Okay, you don't go into this expecting a 10 out of 10 game. You go into this expecting nothing more than mindless fun. Okay, and, and go into it with low expectations. Don't go into it expecting a triple A uh, Yakuza game. Okay, and this is this is the first game I've ever had in the entire series. So for me, it's actually gotten me interested in the rest of the games. And I don't own any of the other games, but I'm I'm gonna pick them up at some point. The PS3 ones at least. As you can see, it did get a massive run up during that COVID boom, COVID era boom, from 1439 US dollars, it's USD on this chart, up to a whopping 8338, which is like $10 million in Canadian dollars. Came back down and hit a rock bottom floor around $55. Bounced off, came back down, retested that level. You can round down, say $50, but 50, 50, 55, it retested the level twice. And then it ran up again, came back down, was attempting to retest it a third time. Didn't quite make it far uh, further. So what we have here is a higher low was made. It never quite retested that, that bottom trend line here. This was heavy, heavy support, heavy, heavy support line there. Didn't even make it to the retest. So I don't think this thing's going back down 55. I just about guarantee you that. And it appears to be finding a lot of support around Back to around the old highs, 80 bucks, 75, 80 bucks. Currently price charts, 114 Canadian dollars. That is no small laughing matter, considering you could have got it for like 15, 20 Canadian dollars not that long ago. But nobody wanted it. You know, nobody wants these rare games and these hidden gems, these underrated games, these cult classics. Nobody wants them until the price goes up. Got plenty of sales. It's and, and by the way, it's not rare as in it had a very low print run. It's rare as in the print run was too low for the current demand. Because it was not a sought after game in the past. And now it has become a very sought after game. So now there is more demand today than there was back when this came out. That's what that means. Supply and demand. Plenty of sales, 116, 115, 100 bucks. This might have been disc only. See, it doesn't say CIB. You got to be very careful with these price charting lists. The prices sometimes get corrupted because they throw in disc only or case in disc. 135, 130 bucks. Once again, this one does not say complete. 115. So you can f fairly say, look, 135, 135. This is anywhere between 150 and 135 Canadian dollars. Do you think a game like this might continue to go up over the next five years? If you want the game, what I like to tell people is ask yourself, is it going to go to 200 or would you rather pay 115 today? Because long term, this one's going to 200. I'm telling you that right now. When it goes to 200, you're going to wish you paid 115. The same way you're going to wish that you paid $50 US, the same way you're going to wish that you paid 15 when you had the chance. I do want to read a review as well. So some of the reviews this game got at the time of release were pretty mixed. Some develop or some review publications gave it average scores. Destructoid, 7 out of 10. Game Informer was the highest at 7.5 out of 10. GameSpot was 5.5, and IGN was a whopping 5 out of 10. One reviewer criticized it for its abysmal shooting controls, which they said had poor precision and mobility options, as well as the indefinite spawning of zombie enemies, which they believed make the, made the game tedious and unfun. This is, I'm quoting this reviewer. Additionally, they said... That they made that the choice to make the game a third-person shooter instead of a brawler, like the main series, made the game feel 
unauthentic the Japanese setting. The game, however, was praised for its humor, premise, and optional content. There, so there are mini games, by the way, that's what that means. There are a lot of mini games, which is typical for the series in general. And, you know, they're not overly great. They're just average. You'll have fun playing them, but it's not going to make or break the game. Next up, I got myself Game of Thrones, a Telltale series game. They call this, they call it the Season Pass Disc. This was going to be Season 1, but Season 2 was cancelled. They never made a second one, which is really unfortunate. I don't think it has a manual. This is CIB, as far as I know. And I got this game because I really have started collecting all of the Telltale games. And this one here, believe it or not, it's a rare one. It's not heavily sought after today, but it might be later. Okay, it's a rare one, and, and price charting is deceptive. And, and for those not familiar with Telltale Games, is it's a cinematic adventure. A graphic, choose-your-own-adventure type of game, and some of the choices that you have do affect the story to a certain extent. The, the mainline story you cannot change, the main events, but there's other things that will change. Little things based on the decisions that you made. It's like an interactive movie, and I really like the Jurassic Park Xbox 360 game. That's a Telltale game. It's just like living your own Jurassic Park movie. They're very simple. I recommend them for gamers that like to relax. If you've never tried one of those games, and you're like, oh, that, well, that's stupid. I want to like get into the action. I like my action RPGs, my Resident Evil games. Well, give it a, give it a go. Give it a go. You might find that you like it. So let's pull up the chart here because the chart is very deceptive. You need to take note of that. So it, it's showing you barely any sales, as you can tell by the chart, and also down here. One sale in 2024, and then you don't get any sales until 2023. This is not accurate. Okay, so be aware of that. In fact, th this is just an error with price charting itself because there's another Game of Thrones games from Atlas. I believe that one's more of an action RPG. So it's saying that this price charts for twenty one eighty eight Canadian, but in reality, it's throwing most of the sales into the regular Game of Thrones mix. And this is skewing the value of this Atlas titled Game of Thrones and also the Telltale copy. So let's find a Telltale copy that we know for certain. Is Telltale just to give you proof here? See, this one says Atlas. This guy knows that it's like messing with the algorithm. Here's one Telltale, twenty-seven fifteen Canadian, and that's about what it's worth. If I scroll over to eBay right now, I'm on eBay.ca, so this will only show games that are shipping to Canada, and this is important because this is priced lowest to highest. Lowest right now, 25 bucks. No manual. Which I think is normal anyway. Let's double check. Yes, that is normal. <laughs> so that is skewing the prices as well. It does not have a manual. But regardless, there's one available 25. One for 30. Another for 30. But then beyond that, there's nothing but brand new copies. That's it. You're getting into 35 plus roughly 10, 45 rounded up. And then once that one sold out, we're getting into the $50 territory. It's all brand new copies. There's nothing else available. So when the market finally picks up all these brand new ones, there's nothing else. That's it. We're getting into friggin' PAL versions over here. Look how expensive these ones are. From Italy, 100 bucks. And then, and then that's it. That's the end. Now we're back in a standard Game of Thrones, which isn't worth much. This game is very rare. I don't know why. I really don't know why. Maybe nobody's selling it. I, I wish I knew. Like, is there so many Game of Thrones fans out there and they just, they hold on to it? They hoard it like, like gold? Falling into the hands of nothing but collectors? And once collectors get their hands on these rare games, they typically don't sell them. I'm one of them. I will not be selling you this copy. Even if it goes to $50 or 
I'm not selling it. You can pry it from my cold, dead hands. You can dig it up in my grave, buddy. Next up, we got Mortal Kombat Complete Edition. And to be honest, I already have this for the 360. But there's something unique about this copy. The reason I haven't sold it, because I originally thought about selling it. Oh yeah, by the way, I forgot to say what I paid for these. But I paid $62 for Yakuza. Steal of a deal. It was roughly around the time it was going up in price. And people hadn't realized what was happening yet. So I beat the market to it. I saw what was happening. I saw the trend. I picked it up. Game of Thrones I paid $13 for. Which was a very good price. And also I looked up, you know, I saw that it was a little bit rare. And, and I didn't even know it existed. I saw, I saw it come up for auction. I knew about the, the Atlas one because I have that one. But I didn't know about the Telltale one. Mortal Kombat I got because it's 3D compatible. 3D compatible. And I, I am a little bit sick with the flu right now, guys. So bear with me. Other, yeah, this is the complete edition as well. Obviously the best and better version. It's not worth too much. I got it because I'm collecting all of the 3D compatible games. And there's a lot of them out there. Now, I don't have a 3D compatible TV, fortunately, but I do have the glasses. And I got the PlayStation branded, Sony branded PS3 3D glasses that they released back in the day. Because here's the other thing that you need to be aware of. They're, when you get these 3D glasses, they're, there is a difference in quality. Do not get... An Amazon branded piece of garbage. They don't work as good. Trust me on that. Get top of the line and you know Sony released good quality. Okay, next up we got some interesting gems. Spider-Man Shattered Dimension. And Spider-Man Edge of Time. And if you look closely, pay attention here. What do you notice? What do you notice? The keen eye is immediately saying, well, wait a minute. That's the PAL version. Those are the PAL versions. Why did you buy those? Well, <clears throat> I got lucky. Because... No one was bidding on them because they were the PAL versions. But little, little did those other people know that you can play PAL version on your PS3 North American console. The PS3 is region free. And I didn't know that previously either. I learned that from you guys in the comment section. You guys taught me that. And because of that, I was able to get these for $20 a piece. And at the time, they were trading for only about $40 US, I think. I paid 20 Canadian, but I knew that they would go up because the North American copy was already starting to take off. So let's pull up the chart of Spider-Man Edge of Time. This is the PAL version. Check the top left corner, PAL version. When I bought this a long time ago, it probably was, C 2023 here, because I got a backlog of like 500 or 600 games that I got to get through for these videos. It was probably trading around $40. US and I paid 20. Nobody bid on it. I knew it was going to go up because the North American version was also starting to tear. And look at what this, th it's still going up. It never stopped. Look at this. It's now going for 80 US dollars and this is the PAL version. And I can play, I can play or sell this. Now I don't have the North American versions. And I was originally planning to sell these and flip them, but, you know, do I really want to rebuy the, the North American versions? And also I knew that the price was going up. So I, you know, I thought about selling it locally for like 50 bucks at the time. But the price is only going up. They're not remaking these Spider-Man games. They're never going to re-release these games. There's different rights is issues per game that have happened. Certain, certain developers like Activision, they lost the rights to these games. They're done. They ain't coming back. Now let's look at Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions, which is the second best Spider-Man game, in my opinion. 
Web of Shadows is a little bit better. Same thing, man. This this chart is just it's it's actually almost identical. It's basically identical. Okay. CIB going for a hundred bucks. Canadian about seventy five USD, and this is once again PAL version. You want to see North American version? Let's throw up North American version. Oh dang. Okay, guys, I was. I thought it'd be worth even more. <laughs> Shockingly, it's about the same as the PAL version. That's incredible. Chart looks a little bit different though. See, it didn't have the massive uh, dip. It didn't dip as low as the. You know, uh, you know what's probably happened here? North American people started buying up the PAL version because it was cheaper. I bet you that's what happened. I'm telling you. But recent sold listing, 141 Canadian dollars, 142. Lastly, I also got Web of Shadows for 60 uh, Canadian dollars. Uh, got a steal of a deal on that one. I felt, I felt kind of bad when the seller had to sell that one. In fact, I thought the disc was going to be scratched. I didn't believe him. And this is considered to be the best PS3, Xbox 360, Spider-Man game. I thought the disc was going to be scratched. It's not. I was very, very happy. Got very, very lucky, admittedly. And it's just rip roaring higher. You know, there ain't no crash coming. This is never going to come back down to 20 or $40. Unless we get a Black Swan event like the Great Depression 2.0. And even then, I'm not so certain it would come down. Because I'm not selling my copy. The only way I would sell it is if I literally am dying of starvation. And I envision the government. I just, I'm just going to go to the bread lines. Sit in line for a piece of bread for five hours before I sell you this. And if the rare games did come down in a Great Depression 2.0, anybody with money is going to be the ones buying them up. It ain't going to be you, buddy. It ain't going to be you. It's going to be me. I'm going to be buying them all up. This is considered the best Spider-Man game. One of the best Spider-Man games ever made. And it's, it's interesting to say that because the PS3 is kind of a really old console. Next up, we got Fight Night Round 3. Very cheap game. Found it in the dumpster. Went dumpster diving. I'll do... I'm willing to do whatever it takes to find games on the cheap. Now, this game... I, I was very excited to find it because it says at the back that it has an exclusive two-player split-screen mode. Okay. Here it is. Here it is. Split-screen multiplayer action. Punish your rivals and go head-to-head -head against your friends with exclusive split-screen battles. Meaning, I don't think the split-screen is in other versions of Fight Night. It's a new thing that they tried. I've never seen a boxing game go split screen before. So I was very excited. But admittedly, I, f I found out why that I don't think they make the split screen mode anymore. They, they put an end to that. It sucks. It's complete garbage. It's like a first person view. And it's just, unless you're doing motion controls like Wii Boxing... It's kind of dumb. It, I'd rather play traditional boxing games. So I was very disappointed. You know, the single player's not bad, though. Next up, we got Fight Night Champion. Three copies, because I keep finding it for cheap. People don't understand that this is the best boxing game of this generation. Very fun single player. It's like a cinematic adventure or a cinematic movie that you play out through through your boxing career. And it's about five hours. <clears throat> and they tried to make it unique because you don't just go in and fight. It's not just a boxing match. You go in and each opponent, your objective is to fight with a different style. You can't you don't just go in with uh like each opponent will have different strengths and weaknesses, and you have to find out how to beat that opponent using a very specific style of boxing. It's kind of like Punch-Out, really. It's, it's a modern-day Punch-Out. 10 out of 10 game. The chart is also quite interesting. 
because it had the the chart on the chart it had this huge run up i guess this was the covid run up but to get a run that high i think a youtuber some big name somebody must have mentioned this game or something happened because that is very rare it's come back down to a reasonable price about 15 10 15 dollars some of them go for 27 down here september 7th close to 30 canadian 30 canadian oh yeah so it can you know on rare occasion maybe a good good condition copy good disc you can get a pretty penny for it you know it depends what else is on the market at that time when, when somebody comes in and they underprice their game, let them sell out. If you're not in a hurry to buy, let them sell out. Or if you're not in a hurry to sell, I mean, keep your eye out for that one because you will find it at Pawn Shop sometimes for about three bucks. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'm trying to get to over 9,000 subscribers on my way to collecting over 9,000 retro games.